Thank you for tuning in to CW Hip Hop's live podcast. I'm your host, DJ Bank. Co-host here, as always, I got Garky and what's Prism. Up, what's, up? what's good? We also have special guests in here. We have Don Pablo out of Wassa. Hello, yeah. guys. And we will be interviewing him. We will be interviewing him. Yes, sir. Oh, real, real close to home, so we don't have much about how was your drive. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> My Salaskit, though. Yeah, yeah. Traffic was light. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hopefully it wasn't too bad out there. Good weather? Good weather? Weather was nice, no okay. problems getting good. into town. Good, good. 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 Uh, so where can the listener find you on social medias? Um, Facebook, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, everything like that. Music related, you can find me straight up Don Pablo. Um, Instagram, you can find me Isami Don Pablo, underscore between all the words. Is there a reason it's different? Was Don Pablo taken? Absolutely. Somebody oh, okay, else okay. had to take it, of course. Right. You know. And you don't want to do like Don Pablo 1 or... No, <laughs> no, no. it's me. Or zero. Um, it's a me. All right, so go give him a follow. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CW Hip Hop. Follow me at BVNC95 on Facebook and Instagram. Yo. Garky, where can the listener find you at? You guys can find me on Instagram at Garky Gaines, G A R K E G A I N Z, and pretty much any other platform at Garky. Uh, what about you, Prism? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Prism Rap, P R I Z M R A P. <laughs> All I almost right. Forgot. Go give us a follow everywhere. Uh, we also have our Patreon shout out. Thank you, Danielle Garkey, for your listener Thanks, tier. We do appreciate your support each month. If you want to get your name do added do. to that list, you can do so at patreon.com slash cwhh. What's up? We appreciate all the support. If you want, if you are listening on a recording back of this or uh, on our cwhiphop.com feed of it, you can also join us on IGTV at cwhiphop. We do have our question uh, that we post in the comments there. We're going to oh, go over shit. that real quick yeah, before we get into all the questions here. I uh, want to let you guys know about some new music coming out of the Wisconsin hip-hop scene. JD has his project, Changes, that is dropping April 1st. If you buy a physical CD, you can get entered to win a JD hat. Hit him up on social medias at JD Makes Music. We also have Domir the Dragon with Cold and Gray, that is out right now. Vinny Sincata with his song, Legends, out right now as well. Big Savo with Sweet Love, his EP, that is out now as well. Uh, Conclusion to God with Unworldly, and that is out everywhere as well, so you can guys go stream all of those songs. want to let you know, too, real quick about some concerts in the area. Uh, first, we have Saturday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Dustin Warbear is going to be performing at the Freight Room in Hopkins, Minnesota. Yeah, a little bit out of state. I, I'll be honest, I didn't look on a map where it is in the state of Minnesota, but if you're able to make it, I don't know if it's close on the west side I mean, of the I feel state like there. I, I feel like I'd assume it would be. If not, make the drive. Why not? What, what, what else are you doing? I don't like driving. It's a Saturday. I'm trying to save gas. Yeah, fuck. Like, gas okay. prices. Well, if you're in the area, you can afford <laughs> it. Go over there. Uh, we also have um, Friday, April 8th at 10 p.m. Was it? Make sure you post it. Oh, I don't know if it's gonna play. Good, good call. See if it does. Um, we have uh, sorry, Friday, April 8th at 10 p.m. JD Prism and Cookies and Cream performing at Night School in Weston, Wisconsin, and then Saturday, March 26th. At 8 p.m., Big Savo is going to be performing at the Tarbenders in Reedsburg, Wisconsin. Now, he also has a big show lined up. I don't want to call it a tour, but he's got like four of them just within he's got a ton month of April. April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll be going over all to get a little closer. So make sure you stick around for uh, any other next episodes so you guys can find out about all those next as well. Episode. Next episode. All right. Uh, that's all I got for uh, announcements. Do we want to do the question right well, away? Well, I guess the question, yeah. So uh, the question that we had on the live DJ, which again, you guys should tune into our live DJ on the Instagram live so you Do guys it. can uh, participate in these questions that we have. Uh, the question was, what is your go-to summer vibes hip hop song? And I said, Good Day by Ian Dior. Do you just want me to list yours off or do you want to say it? Uh, mine was an album. It was FM exclamation point by Vince Staples. And it's, it's a radio station format, flows all into each other, um, summer vibe. So definitely, I thought that was a great pick for it. What do you got for yours, Prism? I had Low Key by Cully Zwack. He's one of the homies. I make music with him on the regular, but uh, that song was just in my playlist all last summer, and I'm probably going to have it in there again this yeah. summer. So. Yeah. All right, and Don Pablo, what did you pick? Uh, I'll just simplify instead of the two choices I chose last time. Um, just Mac Miller Kids, the whole whole record for this nostalgia and just... Really, that's it. Nostalgia, summer vibes, man. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad they brought that to Spotify. Finally, and I just else. except they For left real. out uh, what was it, La La La, the like s special bonus track. You can mm -hmm. find it on SoundCloud still, but it's not on Spotify, which is like one of my favorite that's Mac Miller tracks on. So I didn't, I didn't know they mm -hmm. left one out there. I didn't know they did that either. Uh, Fix no, that no. Spotify. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. 
And then people, we had we had a couple people uh, participating in the chat. We had YMN say "Beach Ballin" by Young Pinch. We had Exclusive saying "Summer Nights" by Lil Rob. JD Makes Music said "Social Distance" by Cassie Kasky. Uh, Sterling MKE said "Gin and Juice" by Snoop Dogg. Philly said "Swervin' in Motion" by Two Meach. And Rouse said "With You" by Jake Hill and Josh A. I think that was a good question. We gotta come up with more. Yeah. We gotta get like a whole list, like you're saying. We're gonna we're gonna, gonna work questions. a little bit on those. Make sure they're not all the same because they did feel a little. They do get little a little repetitive. related. Yeah, related. I don't know what else. Like they're the not same, exactly the same. But it's like the same close. question, just like re differently worded. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we'll work on that though. But I think we're all set to get Let's started get on it. this interview. Right off the bat, I just want to welcome you to the studio. Thank you guys. Is, Thank you. You know, how, how is the environment? I'm uh, comfortable. Good. Good. Absolutely. That's what we're going for. It's homie vibe. Yeah, That's absolutely. What we're going for. Yeah. Make sure the homies feel at home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think this is like one of our closest interviews that we've had since you actually live in Wausau. So how was the short drive? Um, so short that we had to drive around before we even. <laughs> oh got yeah, because yeah, we yeah. were so early. So. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing I, exciting. I told him to show up at six, and I only only say that to people because everybody lives so far away. And most of the time, when we're interviewing them, give them a little time. And so I just like, oh, I kind of late. forgot yeah. that he was that he was a close interview. So how you feeling coming into this interview? Um. Good. I mean, obviously, this is the first time I've ever like sat down and talked about anything ever. So it's kind of nice to be able to yeah get some things out. You never had like therapy before or anything like that. You never well, you see, that's there. a little bit different. <laughs> than well, I mean, that's something we've done. Talk about too. Absolutely, <laughs> therapy. That's some sort of an interview, right? <laughs> so, well, how did you come up with the name Don Pablo? Um, give it to us straight. Well, straight. I mean, obviously. Not obviously. Pablo Escobar, right? That's part yeah, of it. more or less. Oh, for some actually, actually yeah. Oh, um, I didn't know that. <laughs> for some reason, growing up, I was always told I look Hispanic, which I, I, I'm not, as far as I know, I am not. All right, we um, need Ancestry.com sponsor. Somebody, yeah, somebody wants to hook me up with that. Twenty-three <laughs> yeah. and me or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. I like to know what my percentages are. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so kind of with that, um, and then I went as Halloween once as Pablo Escobar from like Narcos. Oh, so okay. if I shave down everything and I leave just a mustache, you can. It really is pretty uncanny. Um, and at first I was gonna go with. You gotta do an album called Pablo and then shave your face like that and put the cover art and shit like that. That would be that, dope. Yeah, dude. I think you want to with Pablo. Or Life of Pablo. But he has a song called Story yeah, of Pablo. Yeah, I do have. Yeah, the Story of Pablo. Oh, okay. Um, um, so then that was kind of where I got like I was like all right we're gonna kind of go with that whole Escobar vibe okay, and then okay. I released I came out on Facebook and I said um I actually didn't come out as Don Powell right away my last name is Ebinger Hermston so I was gonna mm -hmm. try to play in my last name with Escobar so or with mm -hmm. uh yeah Pablo Escobar so it was just gonna be like EBB like my last name yep Escobar and then somebody commented on there and um and just said dude why not just do like Don Pablo and I was like and like Pablo Escobar's, it like, first name. The that, well, they, they call him, they're like, the Don, you know? Oh. Don Pablo. And I was like, oh, Don okay. Pablo. And I was like, all right, I think I kind of like that. Um, and <laughs> it's not like... I, I tried to make sure I wasn't stepping on, like, toes or being, like, unpolitically correct, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a pretty just kosher name for where I was at the time. And then, like, once you hear, like, the backstory, you're kind of like, all right, word, like, I respect that, like good looking on that um and then afterwards i mean i kind of just changed like my whole facebook name to that so it's kind of just locked in at that yeah, point yeah like your personal facebook yeah yeah so Pablo. it's yeah there's no i mean there is like a music facebook i have too but i kind of just post everything right there for everyone to see on that one mm -hmm. so that's where don pablo came from and i just kind of ran with it yeah, one year he went as, as pablo escobar to halloween and boom here we are now yeah, they walked around with, like a little baggy <laughs> Oh, man. Gets pulled over by the cops. <laughs> Taste it, I Taste, promise. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> Taste it. Uh, I, no, I think it's a good walk. name. It's kind of short, sweet, punches. You remember yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it rolls off the tongue. It does. I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's a good name. And I wanted to try to keep it somewhat personal to me because, like, obviously, like, young Pablo came to mind in Lil Pablo. But it's like... Everybody's I don't, doing that. Uh, yes. And I was like... Stand up. Keep it somewhat related to me. So, like, you were... I'm still, like, I get called Dom anyway, so it's not, like, exactly. abnormal, you know what I mean? It still works and still is, like, um, familiar, I guess you could say. It's comfortable, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I feel you on that. So, now, how long have you been making music, and what what's inspired you to start? Um, What or who, I should say. Yeah. Making music or rap music? Music here, because I know music. you kind of started um, somewhere else. Making music, I would probably say... 
honestly probably middle school. Like I was I, I was playing. How old were you? Like eleven or twelve. Okay. It would have to be okay. like okay. Probably for band class, honestly, because we were assigned, like, you have to improvise certain things, you have to solo over a certain thing, where they, okay. you, you do have to, like, write certain songs. So at that point, it's probably where, like, my whole, like, um, like, actual inspiration, not inspiration, but just, like, interest, I guess you could say, in making music came from. Um, and then after band, like, I took, like, I was in brass, so doing, like, trumpet and stuff like that. Um, and then, like, jazz band came, so I started playing drums, and the piano came in. Um, and then once I kind of had the ability to play multiple instruments, I was like, I kind of, let's put this all together type thing. So I was in, like, little bands throughout junior high and high school and stuff like that with friends. Um, Give me names of these bands. A Life After was oh, okay. one of okay. them. Okay. Um, Deliberation, I think, was the first one I had. <laughs> Which probably could use some more deliberating before I got Dude, it was. Band names are the fucking best. <laughs> it was, man. I'm pretty sure this guy was in one of them. I think he who was. Who is this guy? Who is Rouse this guy? Yeah. over there who's holding your, the cat? Who's your homie? Holding the cat down. Oh, yeah. He's Barry. He's the Barry distractor yeah. of today's show. <laughs> um, I think he was in a life after, actually. Um, for like a day. And then we got the cops called. <laughs> what, 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 what instrument did you play? Drums, okay, okay. Yeah. Every um, producer yeah. starts off as a drummer, yeah. I think, let's be honest. So that's where, like, the whole making music came from. And then, honestly, dude, I'm not even going to lie, I was not a fan of rap. Or it was, like, a guilty pleasure type thing that I never really wanted to admit, maybe. Okay. Because okay. um, I was always, like, really, like, since I played instruments, I was, I was like, yo, I got to make the music. You got to be playing the music, you know what I mean? So it's like, what is that? Uh, electronic, not even electronic, but it's like you made it on a computer. It didn't yeah. actually take anything. They make rock music like that nowadays. Look I know it. Like, like the baby metal up, stuff. A is bunch like, of that oh, shit gosh. is on the computer, and it still sounds like they made it Nobody themselves. Touch me, thermostat. Nobody knows. Break. I mean, granted, I was playing the guitar, but everything else is all. But like, um, fuck. Where was I going? I apologize. Uh, band names. We're talking about. You're in a couple bands. Oh yeah, I didn't like rap. Or yeah, I didn't oh, like yeah, rap. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, guilty pleasure. So I was probably like. 15, 16, I didn't even have my license yet, um, and my I had two friends at the time who were just like diehard Mac Miller fans, and I just never vibed with it for some reason, I uh, just couldn't get down with it, and there was one day, I, we were just all over at his house playing COD Zombies, classic Black oh, Ops, dude. Hey. Oh, what map? Yes. Kino. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Dolphin <laughs> diving down the stairs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and they had Donald Trump playing in the background, and I must have made a comment about it, and just said like, "Can we listen to something else?" And I shit you not, not, not like oh, that. Out of <laughs> not you in the face. That is one hundred percent what happened. Oh my that's, god, that's where this story is going. No they both way fucking, you said Not that. like obviously they're like my <sighs> friends, so they didn't like beat the shit out of me, <laughs> oh. but like they had me on the ground like kicking me and shit. So they're like, "You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna admit that you like they Mac beat Miller." Them back into yeah, and then no and eventually, way I would let you get away with that for real. And eventually, and now I have them tattooed on me, which is hey, crazy. Good, good, good. Um, say, yeah, so, <laughs> And oh, then, so after crazy. that, like, maybe maybe I did, they did, like, knock some sense into me, or I was just able to at least admit that I do like it, and maybe I was trying to, like, be that guy that's, like, different. So maybe I if I would open your it. mind to it, maybe, because I know for a fact I was close-minded to, like, like grunge rap and stuff like that. Like, I didn't think it was Well, and literally, like, oh, I was, like, a long, black, curly-haired kid wearing Metallica t-shirts and stuff. It was, oh, like, okay. just not mm -hmm. my vibe at the time, you know what I mean? Um, so then I guess that's where rap kind of started was, like, I got... The shit beat out of me. <laughs> That's fucking until, awesome. Until I admitted that I liked rap. And then I guess I just, I like rap. <laughs> so then... That's you heard it here first, folks. It's <laughs> more psychological than for real. You force people into <laughs> liking not hip hop music. It's though. real. Abuse so is okay if sometimes. You watch, <laughs> if you need somebody to listen to your mixtape and they don't even like, they listen to country music, maybe beat the shit out of them while repeating. You'll never your be able to beat country into me, though. I'm just playing that <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, that, that is impossible. Yeah, it doesn't work um, both ways. Cheers to that. <laughs> so I didn't actually start making rap though till like probably 2018, 2019. Okay. Um, I had this like dream or goal with a couple friends we were going to move to vegas um and then one of my other friends was going to be a singer my other dude was going to do like producing and stuff which he had never done anything it's like it was, we were literally just dreaming mm -hmm. um and then Man, one of them shit, one of them made the comment that was like your voice is kind of low like you could you could probably do that rap thing if you wanted to and i was like nah we're kind of just dreaming you know what i mean um, and it never, one of the dudes went to Vegas, did his thing, never sang or did anything like that, but ended up doing it. And then at some point I just, I was like, I, 
like he said it for a reason, so he must hear something. And I was like, I like making music. I have access, like I had a MacBook at the time, so GarageBand and shit like that. So I was like, I have access to doing stuff if I wanted to. Um, and then, like, weirdly enough, I was at a Christian music festival, Life Fest, um, okay. and it was like after all the sets were done, um, and I was kind of just walking around smoking cigarettes and stuff, chilling, and I was just sitting down, and I put on. Um, that part instrumental like the schoolboy q no. kanye song that part. Yeah, that part and i wrote the what is now pablo's story um or life of pablo whatever i have it named is now like what ended up being that first um and then i went home go to like lay the piano down so like that song is like actually me playing the piano like i produced that whole thing um put out like a sample of it on facebook and kind of got decent feedback i was like oh people aren't laughing at me which is like what my initial thought was going to be is that's like if i not a bad thing for laughing at you though that's true engagement. you're looking at me you know <laughs> what i mean um i think that was kind of what was holding me back at first was just like actually like getting people to take you seriously just putting yourself out there yeah know? so i never actually released that song that um and then it was like 2019 i dated a girl who put me through some shit i mean don't they all they all um yeah and they i know that story <laughs> I, yeah, we're, we're we're cordial now so i'm not going to name drop shit um mm -hmm. But I ended up writing a song, not about her, but like about how the situation, I guess. And that was actually the first song I ever put out. And it was more of like a singing style too. It wasn't even like rap, but it had like trap beat in the background going on. And that gave me decent feedback. And then I put out that Pablo story, decent feedback. And then I started working with, well, at the time he was Delirium, but now he's Rouse. Um, Ah, what was the name before? Zelirium? That's why, it, okay, okay. Zelirium. That makes, okay, that makes more um, sense. I, I saw that name. Yep, and we put out a song together, and again, like, decent, like, we were just getting decent feedback. So I think at that point, after we kind of put that song out, I was, I was like, okay, we're, we're going to do this now, and that's when I kind of, I think that's when I changed my name on Facebook. I was like, we're going to be Don Pablo. I really started to kind of, like, promote and ride that wave for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um... So I guess really, really long answer to your well, you, short well, you just, question. You answered a lot of the questions that I have coming up. To yeah, so I do have, so that's okay. Um, we, we, you said like, you play a lot of instruments. Can yeah. You know, what ones do you all play? Um, so I started off, I was actually trying to think about this before because I figured this would be a question. I don't know what instrument I started off first. I was going to ask my mom. I thought it could be guitar. I it was either. looking at you, you look like a guitarist. <laughs> that's, the first, that's the first instrument I remember having interest in was because um, my stepdad played guitar, my grandfather plays guitar, and like I was always always like I'd be a kid they'd be singing playing guitar so like that was always like super cool to me so like I remember just strumming a guitar um but as far as like actually learning an instrument um I think I started off playing the trumpet in band class in middle school um right. then from there um I started I took piano lessons I took drum lessons um and then through junior high, I switched from the trumpet to the baritone, um, and then did jazz band and well, where I played piano and stuff for them. Um, and then out of there, I took, I think it was actually during, probably during junior high, um, I think I said, yeah, drum lessons, piano, drums, guitar, um, trumpet, baritone. trumpet, baritone, and then um, the bass, if you want to count that. I mean, I, I consider that pretty much I the guitar. I assume you did drums, you probably know xylophone too. Well, I guess most percussion <laughs> instruments. Uh, but I, guess, I mean the bass just from being able to read sheet music and know where, like how the guitar is tuned and know what fret is what note, I was able to pick up on the bass pretty easy. Amy in the chat says your grandma gave you lessons on the piano when you were 11. So that's piano's number one there. I, I piano assume. would be piano. before middle school, I guess then. So yeah, that was probably the first thing I ever learned. Um, and then like just weird i have like weird instruments at home like the uh i think it's called the kalimba ah kalimba, kalimba. it's yeah, like yeah. a little yeah the little pluck, pluck, the pluck thing yeah you yep. pluck it oh okay. yep, yep. um i've got a ukulele at home that i play around on sometimes i need um, some ukulele samples dude <laughs> it's fun it's yeah. a good time i used to have it guiltily as gross as it sounds i put it in the bathroom so when i'm in the bathroom there's like a little mini guitar to play yeah 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 it's Song. Great acoustics in the bathroom. Oh, too, 100%. So, so it worked out great. Um, Come on, Nami, been in there an hour. Yeah, for real. <laughs> what are Make you it, doing in there, bro? I'm Make trying it. to get us out of the hood, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so I think, what is it, six, seven instruments um, like that? But I, I mean, my main instruments, drums, guitar, piano, Yeah. were the, the main three, the roots of 
like you walk in my house, those are like the first things you Can see you when you walk me upstairs. Pianos? Probably, if I were to teach anybody, honestly, piano would be the easiest. Perfect. That's yeah. the co instrument I'm most comfortable with, like just sitting down and spending the most time with is piano. And honestly, once you learn how to play piano, it makes... You play almost everything. It makes yeah, at fine. least tr like transporting the music, like or like trying to figure out how to play it on the other instrument, so much easier. It's just, it really is nice to know. So, so like being somebody who doesn't play any instruments, and I mean, you, we have your MIDI board with a keyboard. Um, how hard is it to like I play any instrument over that. <laughs> over that initial starting period? Like, is it a a quick learning curve? Do you think for somebody who's interested in learning the piano? No. Uh, well, piano is probably an easier one, honestly. Um, as long as you're able to use your fingers well, and like if you're if you're able to like type on a keyboard well and not like get jumbled up over yourself, backspacing all the time, picking up on piano would probably be a little bit easier. Okay. Um, it's just getting over that initial like stress. I feel like most people they sit down at a piano, they pick up a guitar, and they pull up a tab. They look at the sheet music, and like I, I should be able to play this right now. And then they'll spend like an hour or two trying to learn a song, and they just get frustrated, and they're like, "Fuck this, I'm done doing it." Um, but honestly, once you get over that initial just learning curve, and you start to get that like where you can add your own personality to the music, then it's so much easier to like find your passion in it and actually like get lost and then like start writing stuff too because now you know how the instrument works you know what you can get away with what sounds good with what and what doesn't so like if you take the time to do it like it'll reward you but it is a very stressful and i mean that's for me i guess i'm sure there's some people that can just, just pick it up and fucking well, geniuses piano, piano, you know what i mean yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> Pretty heavy, right? We'll go maybe like keyboard, maybe. An guitar. Sorry, but I mean, it's it's worth the Jesus, struggle. The Get out of here. <laughs> so, what other passions do you have outside of music? Video games and cars. Mm. Yeah, I see the cars sports, a lot. Sports, I guess. Okay. Most other dude shit. So I mean, dude starting shit. Up before we get the cars, uh, what kind of games do you play currently? Um, mainly like first-person shooters with the boys. You know what I mean? Um. Otherwise, I've read lately, dude, I've been hooked on Clone Hero, which is like a Guitar Hero mm. spinoff that works on PC. I've been mad addicted to that. You can get like any song you want, ever, pretty much. Um, can we play Prism on there? Dude, I, you can make custom charts. Yeah, you can make ah. yourself upload it. Um, so I've been playing a lot of that, but otherwise, like straight like um, <laughs> Skyrim style games, like that Elden RP, Ring, RPG world. open world, I must. Yo, Elden soccer Rings. for so dude. Fallout or Skyrim or Skyrim. Oh, uh, more Skyrim over Fallout. Fallout was a little bit too immersive for okay. me. Um, not that Skyrim isn't, um, but there was just a lot going on. So like Borderlands style, more arcadey, yeah. like run through the map, simple quest type shit. Not brainless, but like oh, Elden Ring's gonna be not as. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm okay. ready for that. But so um, Elden sure Ring, you know. where it's like you die every boss. Kind but of I thing. still, but that's well, the thing. I don't. Gotta get good. I don't like that's games that like you're able to walk through either. Like most like my games, I pull through. I put through. I'm not the hardest difficulty, but like hardened or bed not veteran, yeah. but hardened. So it's at least still a challenge. I don't like just being able to walk through shit. Yeah, by any means. that's got you. I got you. So if you could headline a concert tonight and pick three artists to open for you, who would they be and why? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you, you can think for a bit because I can edit yeah, this too. Dude, that is actually probably would have to say current artist right now, J. Cole would be there 100%. Okay. okay. Um, J. Rock would okay. probably be there. And then. Better than playing win. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's the only song I know. <laughs> and then. Gotta think of another J artist now. <laughs> like either, well, I was gonna say Schoolboy Q, but he's still in like the C's with TDE, so I can't. Oh, you I got J. I already got J. Rock. Want. We'll go with like Freddie Gibbs. Somebody oh, else to like sure. throw a different, okay, a different type of vibe in there. You know what I mean? Okay, that's a show I would go. Yeah. To. What's the order of that gonna be? I mean, respectfully, Pablo has to go first. Just you know. Oh I no, mean, you're head. No, you're head. Oh, you're right. You're right. right. You start headline. Okay, 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 yeah, okay, okay. Um. J Rock's gonna open just to get that energy going. Mm. He'll close with win. win. Right, win. he'll close win. with win to get that shit going. <laughs> and then probably we'll go with some we'll go with some Freddie Gibbs then to like cause he's a little bit lyrical. He's like a lyrical artist, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he's still got some of that trappier, dirtier stuff. So he'd be like a decent build up for J. Cole, because mm. J. Cole's just a hundred percent lyricist, you know what I mean? Yeah. So probably would go J. Rock, Freddie Gibbs, J. Cole, Pablo. Pablo. Lock right. it in. Okay. I, I like okay. that. Lock it okay. in. Okay. That's a that's a great lineup. That's a good lineup, <laughs> yeah. So when you started making music, did you have any specific goals or expectations you were working towards? 
Mm. Not really. Kind of like what I stated earlier. I don't know if it was when we were live or not, but like I don't necessarily make the music for anybody other than myself. <coughs> so at first it was just more or less just fear of like the backlash, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but mm, say the question one more time. One when you started time. making music, did you have any specific goal or expectation? Just to really stay true to myself more or less. Just do what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and like what I think sounds good or what I'm enjoying instead yeah. of what I think people are going to enjoy. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, I think I like that. Just stay true to yourself and that's the best way to do music. And, yeah, I think setting, not that setting goals is a bad thing by any means, but it also makes it that much easier to get your hopes up. You know what I mean? Like you see this goal and then you start to manifest it, which is a great thing to do. Um, but then if it doesn't happen, it just hurts that much more. Mm. So I kind of just let go with the flow, take the punches as they come type thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just as, as long as I'm enjoying the music I'm making, and I'm, then I'm doing what I want to be doing. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So to my knowledge, the first song you ever posted was three years ago, August 13th, 2018, on SoundCloud, titled Breath of Air. And mm -hmm. Air had the has periods in between A, I, and R, making it look like an acronym. It is. What, is, what does that stand for? Yeah, That's, that, that, that those are her initials. Ah! So we don't want to name drop. Right, okay. okay. It, but it, it just worked out way um, too for, perfect okay. that her initials were AIR. And okay. I was like, breath of air, like I'm out of that relationship. Like we're t It's like, it just, it, okay. the song okay. wrote itself okay. pretty much okay. for me, dude. So yeah. was there anything before that, though? Or was that... That, so before that... you were saying before, I guess, that that was kind of the first one you posted, That's right? the first song I ever posted, okay. but I wrote the verse to Pablo's story, like I said, at that Christian festival. Um... And that was the first time, like, ever actually, like, putting my vocals over, like, a beat and actually doing anything. Um, so that was the, Pablo Sir would be the first song I ever wrote. Okay. But Breath okay. of Air is the first song I ever released. released. Gotcha. Just because gotcha. that's where the vibes were at the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, I had of some shit I needed to say, and that's how I portrayed it. Of course. So what did your first setup look like? What kind of DAW did you use? Equipment, microphone, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but what, how big was the closet? Um... Closet. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. <laughs> See, I always no try that. Nothing like it yet. No, no but, bro. You're but giving every us time too I don't much credit, it, man. Every time I don't say it, somebody says they're in a closet. Mm. Every time I don't say it, somebody says they're in a closet. Damn, if you do, um, damn, if you sucks, don't, man. Honestly, it probably started with a shitty old like desktop computer that my dad let me have in my room with like an old glass tube monitor that I had. On, oh, okay, okay. That I had audacity. God, I hate yeah. Like, <laughs> yep, I hate yep, those. yep. And I probably had audacity on that, but that was just for like recording. That was like when I was doing guitar, trumpet, stuff like that, more or less. Um, as far as like rap would go, um, when I graduated, I got a MacBook Pro, which came with GarageBand. So that's what the program I used was. I had a little M Audio USB mic, and for a pop filter, I put like two clean socks over the top of it. And so like, you go. the ahead. first four or five songs on my song color, probably, I think that's how that was, how those were all done. Um, and then I ended up. Well, Anytime I can, I just go to his house, Rouse's house, because he's got, he's got the equipment. everything <laughs> I'll never need to make Support. me sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, like, for when I'm not there, um, for one of my birthdays, I, uh, my parents gave me uh, the NT-USB, the Rode NT-USB mm -hmm. microphone. Oh. Um, so that's what I used to record at home with oh. a like, pop out, filter that came with it. For real, for real. I had one question. Uh, you said you recorded like the trumpet on Audacity. Yeah. How? Like what? How? Here they, make, like, <laughs> they make little mics for trumpets. I mean, probably not for trumpets. It's honestly just like a shirt mic. Okay. Just clipped on oh. the end of the trumpet, um, and then you just turn the gain all the way down <laughs> on Audacity, <laughs> okay. and then yeah, you can record. I mean, hey, I guess yeah. Turn the but gain like we we had to do it because we had to turn in recordings to oh. like the. Oh, it's for school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't so remember it was actually... having to record music for school. That's interesting. I wish they would have talked well, about that. I don't know if it was for, like... I, I feel like it had to have been. I mean, I went to, like, state for competition and stuff. But then I think it, it was. was. But yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. from before that, even. Like, just oh. normal turning in practice logs type things. Oh, interesting. I guess I was a drummer. Maybe this... I couldn't... They're like, I, I will hear you. They didn't need the recording, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll know if you're out. <laughs> so so we'll be in the same. Yeah, exactly. For real. We're going to be getting calls... Oh my gosh. Uh, so then in the same year, you posted Pablo's Story, September 26th, which is a little bit faster uh, rap with a melodic hook. Mm -hmm. uh, was this like just you experimenting with your sound, or what, what inspired the song? Um, kind of, I mean, literally that is just my story, more okay. or less. Um, uh, loosely. Um, 
so like the verses were really easy and then i don't know even how like that's like one of the only songs i actually put a hook on um i try to stay away from hooks honestly <laughs> um that's just for some reason when i when i started stuff really came easily naturally it felt like things were lining up way easier than they should have been like rhymes were appearing that i didn't even think like it was just like i'd get done with the line and be like damn like okay we're doing it um so like i don't we're know really if i doing this music for thing. real so like when i released that i don't think there was any sort of like motivation behind it any sort of like why i'm writing about this it was just like i had there was just speed behind me that i was just moving yeah. and like i was able to just write it and it came out I, most of the songs on SoundCloud were like all written in a day and put out a couple days later whereas now it takes me fucking four, five, six months to do a song but life happens man life you gotta do it when you can but ass, bro yeah I'll say that's about the timeline I'm on right now it's like where I can I fit it in there but I feel guilty about it but I mean sometimes you you don't want to rush one so make sure you're taking yeah, that's, your that's a big it. thing is yeah. not rushing anything so it's Going back to when you were a kid, what kind of music did you listen to, and what really inspired you, inspired you into this journey? Like, what made you sign up for? Did that music yeah. help you? Inspire, um, sorry, help inspire you? I credit my pretty much my entire music, not history, but like um, influences um, to my stepdad. He was really like '90s. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Alternative. Okay. Um, and like eighties metal and stuff. So I grew up on like Metallica or Pearl Jam, Collective Soul, things like that. Um, and then, I mean, that's still like my go-to honestly is to go back to that era. But then obviously like from there, like the eighties metal, Metallica, stuff like that, Pantera influenced me to like get into like the heavy metal screamo, okay. if you will. So like junior high, that was oh my god, that was all I listened to was just straight. I mean, like I said, I had black hair. I would wake up in the mornings and straighten it, and it was one of those things. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Um, and then like I said, I just at some point, 16, 17, I got the shit beat out of me and started listening to rap. So like, I don't think my influences as like I don't think I was influenced to rap or influenced by rap as a kid really at all like I know I my mom I can like have memories of my mom listening to like Superman by Eminem or like my dad listening to a candy shop or some shit but like I never actually was like this is a good song like can we listen to that again you know what I mean oh, yeah like um, put that shit on repeat mom. right right so like as a kid like I, I, I just never remember rap actually standing out to me um so it's weird how I ended up being influenced by it but then yeah once I admitted that I liked rap. I kind of I, I found Mac. I mean, when you think about it, rap's almost like every genre like combined. Yeah, there's well, there's a lot of. Um, at first, I just I, I like I said I was against like the whole it's not real music. But then when I started to actually listen to like what was being said, I was like, there's some real shit here. You know what I mean? And that's where I started. Like that's where Mac really spoke to me because I, I mean at the time, Mac's what four fucking years older than us, so it's like he's still rapping about shit that's like relative to me you know what I mean so mm -hmm. like that's where like the rap inspiration came from was when I found somebody that was like going through similar shit at a similar age and actually like making it out and I was like oh it's actually it's an option it's something to actually be influenced by something that you can talk about and not be embarrassed by as stupid as it sounds yeah I think you kind of yeah. hit it on the head why uh, a lot of people in our age group are really fans of Mac it was because we related to it we were so real dude. hardcore and it was great music Literally. the kids came I mean he was in high school man and we yeah. were you know what I mean like we Literally. were freshmen he was a senior like yeah senior skipped in you're like I can't for real dude that. absolutely <laughs> smoke weedy yogurt dude like <laughs> it's oh man God damn, Mac Miller, man. Mm -hmm. So now you uh, you were actually one of the artists who inspired CW Hip Hop. We went to a few of your shows at night school before COVID had hit, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was you, uh, JD, and B Plus. Oh yeah, they we went to. Group. You did what? Four of those shows? Uh, I think that lineup we have done three, three with that lineup. Okay, yeah. I think I, I, there was one I missed, so I think I went to two of the three then. Uh, but yeah, it was something that I was just like, this is fun. This is. Uh, something yeah. close here, like I can actually go to these because I, I wanted to go to concerts and stuff, but it's drive to Milwaukee to the rave yeah. or whatever. Like it's so so far to drive, so it's cool to like see them start here. Now, were those your first shows that you um, ever did? For like rap and stuff, yeah. Um, but I'm not like a stranger to performing in front of uh, a crowd, I guess. Um, like I played for my church worship team um, and the youth group worship team, and obviously like band class and stuff like that. So like being in front of a 
crowd was never a problem, but that was like the first time ever playing my music, like my music in front of anybody. Um, and that's definitely different. It, it was different. Yeah. There was a, it's a different type of nerve, because it's like... I was going to say, how was that experience? Um, the most humbling experience, honestly. Um, once the nerves go away and you kind of find your rhythm and you, you like once I noticed that like the crowd's digging it and like I'm interacting with them, they're interacting back with me, like it, I almost low key kind of like black out up there, but then like afterwards you get off the show and like literally faints. The, yeah, <laughs> but like the people, they like just the handshakes, the high fives, I like all that. It, it's I've never felt that type of experience before, you know, it's very, very rewarding and like it's like somebody's noticed me you know what I mean yeah. like um <clears throat> so it's not like a Sunday morning leading 400 people into worship you know what I mean it's yeah, yeah. I'm leading 75 to 100 people in Down some to sin for them. yeah some <laughs> trap music you know what I mean so it's a, it's a completely different vibe but it is an unmatched <laughs> feeling funny. it really That's is good, good but it's rewarding yeah yeah I uh I definitely I'm excited to perform for the first time. Dude. We got one coming up in July sometime. So I'm excited, I'm excited to, to be sharing, you sharing the stage. With I'm you. very oh, yeah. excited yeah. to see you perform. Dude, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but you should be. Um, you're gonna be ready for that show, BMBNC. I'm hoping so. I mean, I'm you hoping. got. You're gonna practice. We'll have you practice. Oh, for sure. Oh, I'm yeah, not yeah, going up there. You don't have practice. to go right before stage. Yeah, you don't have to go before <laughs> Young Sage. Don't your worry, you'll show. be fine. That's true. Uh, you then posted that way, featuring Sub Music Boss. May 23rd, 2019. Another fast rap where you actually throw shots at Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> saying, Who the fuck is Cardi B? She spits the flow retardedly. Yeah. Did yeah. you have something against her at the time? Not at all. <laughs> it just, it just <laughs> Not at all. That was like right after Bodak Yellow came out. Okay. So okay. it was like she was, she was really relevant at yep, the time. Yep. Um, and I don't know why. Did like, she ever respond? Not yet. Yeah, right, right, right. She not throws yet. a diss at Don Bobble. I got my hopes up there. They're yeah. still up there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's the song. That's where he came into play. Rouse was that's the first time I ever worked with him on a song. Um, but you can definitely tell vocally. You can hear that there's a big. The vocals are definitely not mixed the way they should have been. But you can tell right away that there's a different something different was going on. Yes. After I mean, yeah, like definitely. during that song, um, and yeah, I featured that sub music guy. Which how was that? Uh, I like him. I would like to work with him again. I would just like more. My problem with working with people and my problem with working, like when people ask me, Zachy P called me out of this shit, um, it's just that he hit me up for a song fucking what, two years ago and I gave him a verse in like a week and I was like, let's do it. And then I just don't do it. And that's what happened with That Way. It was like, I was like, hey dude, I got this song for you. I want you to be on it. And he sent me a verse and I was like, that's fucking sweet. Let's do it. And then six months, a year goes by and there's no verse. And it's like, dude, I'm ready to, like, this song's done. Can we do it? And then he ends up sending me a verse, which ended up just, like, I think it came out a little bit rushed. So it just kind of put left a bad taste in my mouth for working with people. And then I realized that I'm a fucking, I'm just as guilty <laughs> of it. So I understand why. But Sometimes. it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then another day later, May 24th, 2019, you posted a remix uh, with another CW hip hop artist, JD makes music called Deep Sleep Remix. How was it working with JD? Really smooth. Really, that's what I'm saying. Every time I've ever worked with, so I have a song with Zachy P that's not out yet, and I have that song with JD. And I think lyrically wise, it's some of my most. I don't want to say clever, but like it's actually real. It's not just like um, a lot of my stuff is more like club music. You can get down to, you know what yeah, I mean? Yep. Yep. Um, so there's not as much substance behind it, um, whereas the song with Bryant, um, or JD, I guess for most people, um, actually had, like, there was an actual, like, topic to the song, you of know course. what I mean? Something that I actually was supposed to be writing about. Um, and then, like, being able to hear his verse, I actually, like, he, it was nice working with him because he, like, gave me points. I wrote the verse and he, like, actually asked me to change up a couple words and stuff to make it more fit his style so it wasn't just like he let me do what I want there was still like uh it's just his song we're gonna guide it the way he wants so it was nice because that was the first time I'd worked with somebody instead of like me trying to get them to you know what I mean the okay. other way around yep. um so to be on the opposite end you kind of get like a different sort of I think you put more respect behind when you do a feature verse 
um, because it's not your song. You know what I mean? You can maybe get a little more complacent. You can make it your song if your verse is good enough. Well, <laughs> true, true. Does it. Right. Yeah, with your own music, you can kind of get complacent and be like, that's my style, we're going to go with it. But with somebody else's stuff, like it kind of makes you still like really diligent to like what they want you to sound like. So being able to work with Brian was the first time I ever actually like had that pressure mm -hmm. put on me, I guess, which was nice. And then when I recorded the song, he had fucking a whole room full of people and the booth was just, the mic was right in the middle of the room. So it was literally just me acoustically rapping about popping pills in front of like six people. So it was like a weird- Oh gosh, okay. Different studio. It was, it was, it was interesting. which, but I think also added the vibe of the song mm. too. Cause like okay. I kind of, you know, eyes closed it, just really took in the moment type thing. You know what I mean? So yeah. mm -hmm. it was okay. nice working with him. I okay. liked it. Got you. Sounds pretty good. And like you said, it was uh, you know about popping pills. This, per, the song portrays a drug addiction. Have you struggled with substances in the past? Um, not as far as like pills go. I mean, but Don Pablo. Don Pablo, <laughs> you know. No, I Why? don't like snow days. Um, I smoke weed, which is really, really prevalent in my song. Like you'll you can tell right away in my songs that I do. So like that's no secret. Um, but I think that the more the deep sleep song kind of goes back. It's like a. It's not like more of an addiction thing, but I think the vibe JD was going for is more of like a, um, this is kind of how we deal with our depression. You know, we're kind of going through some shit and that's the only okay. thing that's making me feel anything, really, you know what I mean? So it's not that there was a substance, that, I mean, granted, if you're taking anything out of the, the prescribed way, it's an abuse problem. Um, but it's not like a, a rest in peace, juice world thing, not like a, you know, I'm popping perks, look at me type thing like of course you make you know what i mean it was more of like a let's be honest about it type yeah. situation mm -hmm. instead of let's flaunt it type situation exactly i got you on that i got you on that and then you posted two songs june 11th titled days gone and ask twice i don't even know yeah. that days gone is a <laughs> song <laughs> reminiscing on your childhood and your past yeah You've gone too fast is there something specific that influenced that song um, and maybe a memory you thought about or something like that, that. Literally just my childhood. That's what I was saying. Like there was just a time, like when I first started, like the SoundCloud stuff, where the songs were kind of just writing themselves more or less. Like the content was there, and I've noticed, like kind of going back to like uh, like Brian's song, he gave me a topic to write about. That one, I had a topic to write about right away, which is the past and reminiscing on it, mm -hmm. um, which just made it really, really easy. And then like being able to like. I mean, it's my life I was pretty much talking about, so, like, nothing in there is bullshit. It makes it a lot easier to actually find rhymes and lines when you're not just, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, rapping about shit that's actually closer to me was a lot easier than just making a club banger, mm -hmm. even though you'd think it'd be the opposite. Um, Maybe, guess or no, I guess. I don't know that there was necessarily anything that motivated me to make that song. I think I heard the instrumental, and right away, like... The chorus came into my head, and then I put the chorus down, and then the verse just like it just it just came. So it wasn't like I was going out of my way. I was like, I want to write a song about my past. It was like I hear the beat, um, and just kind of rose to yeah. the surface. Actually, I'm pretty sure. Pardon me. Um, that was like shortly after Mac passed. Um, so I'm pretty okay. sure the instrumental was like I was searching like Mac Miller type instrumentals, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do like a homage song to him. And I think that's how that ended up coming to be. I got you. Okay. I mean. Uh, and then Ask Twice was a whole different vibe. With yeah. Big, big 808s, drill high hats, and compared to Days Gone was, Days Gone being the emotional, like thought pr mm -hmm. provoking song. Was this still like you experimenting and yeah. showing people how versatile you are? Absolutely. Um, one of my things, like when I first started putting out music, I guess, was like I don't want any song to sound exactly like the other. I would, I would like people to be like, this sounds like it could be a Don Pablo song, but I don't want it to be like, this is it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I strive to do was try to be as different as possible, especially in the beginning when I started out, was like try to figure out what I can do best, what I can't do. Um, so like, yeah, that jump literally is like what you said, it was just me seeing what I could get away with, and I'm pretty sure I went and just typed in probably like Suicide Boys style beat, and <laughs> that's the shit that came up, and I was like, I want to see if I can write to this, and I did, you know what I mean. So, and also uh, going back to the whole tribute with Mac, you, you did make one. You yep. made like a tribute slash remix of Best Day mm -hmm. Ever. Yes. Yeah. And he posted that June 29th, uh, 2019. Uh, did his passing hit you so hard you just had to? Dude, um, yeah. I honestly never really understood like how people could get affected by 
celebrity deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, I totally agree with that. I was, I was like, man, yes, it's a bummer, but like, why are we all, why are we getting so sad about it? Um, and then Mac passed, and like, I was with people today, so I was like, we'll keep it in. But the next morning, I woke up, rolled up, and listened to his entire discography from like Easy Mac days mm. all the way up until uh, there was no circles at the time. So good just swimming, yeah. I think, or good swimming, AM. Yeah. Yeah. Swimming, yeah. Oh, well, swimming. Yeah. yeah. yeah so well, from right. Easy Mac days to swimming and just like, oh, I fucking cried, dude. I was like, this is, especially like certain ones that like, <laughs> oh yeah. So when, once like I got to the Macadelic era when he started, mm. like Max himself started to go through some of the like problems, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. when I was like, that's when I lost it. And I was like, I need to kind of do something um and that just best day ever it was just like that's that song that always stuck with me the most um by him so i was like and then i found i was lucky enough to find an instrumental where somebody left the uh his chorus in mm. so i was like that's really that's really cool actually yeah. so i just i like that a lot how you did redid that. the yeah. verses for it and then left his voice go over the chorus still so it was kind of like in my eyes as corny as it sounds, like me featuring with yeah, Mac, no, it's like a yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, that's probably to, the closest you're gonna. That's get what I'm saying. To be able to yeah, hear exactly. myself on a track with him, type thing, and be like, because like he is enough. my inspiration. You know what I mean? Like he's the reason I rap now. Um, so like I just needed to do something to at least, of course, show that there's some connection there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that that's how that's how it came. I'm, I, it was a great fucking remix. Man. Hell yeah, so I really like that. That's what, like that's what those real ones, the ones I have a topic. It's always so much easier for me to like actually write about. <laughs> so nice. was, oh, I was gonna say you said uh, uh, best day ever was the one that really stuck with you. Is that your favorite Mac Miller song, or what is your favorite Mac Miller song? Yeah. For the, I guess um, that's an impossible question. Let's well, just be honest. Yes, yeah. That's, um, that's it would depend on like the vibe. If I'm going for that, if that's the mood I'm in, absolutely. But like, I guess maybe to make this a little easier for you. What is your go-to album? Yeah, by Mac- album. Macadelic. Macadelic. Okay. Okay. Even though Kids is like my go-to summertime, Macadelic has a little bit of like. I mean, he's got some. He's got Lil Wayne. He's got Kendrick on there. Yeah. Uh, great features on that record. Um, so, it touches a little bit of everything. It's got straight like loud. It's just a hundred percent a trap song. You know what I mean? Just like club banger. So, a little bit of everything on there. Um, and like I, I was at the time where I was admitting that I liked rap and I was, pretty, I was diving into <laughs> it so like it was I was senseless. really really open to that that album at the time so that's if I were to choose any that's where it would be okay yeah. and, uh, like, the, do you have any like really good memories that you can recall that maybe involved Mac Miller maybe a song was playing in the background of his or like you were at shit something kicked oh that one <laughs> I guess that I would mean, be that the would one stick with me too. never mind yeah um, if my science teacher hit me with a two by four when he was teaching me I'm sure I would have fucking yeah. remembered something or like. um <laughs> I remember once my parents took my iPod and like deleted fucking everything, every artist that had a curse word in there, so like oh, gone. No. So I remember My like hurts. and it was like right before a road trip too, so like uh, that's a memory uh, of like not having Mac Miller oh, as a memory, no. you know what I mean? I it guess was, uh, going back to, I got I used to yell that <laughs> <laughs> for real, dude. Yeah, right. For real. I used to yell that in the basement blur and drop the world. Oh, it, with the explicit yeah. version too, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. See, I would but never dare so play this shit. That's what I'm saying. It was like was a guilty playing, pleasure for so long. I was just going crazy. Yeah. Guilty oh, I pleasure. could never. Yeah. I had to keep that shit. They never secret. stopped me though. They, they yelled, fact. but they didn't stop me. Oh, they shut me They would just so turn fast. it down. It, it yeah. was always turn it exactly, down. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or the what the fuck are you listening to? Oh yeah. That was fun. <laughs> you then ended 2019 with six more tracks: No Mo, Peep This, I. Or FIU, Kickback, 2020, and Iowa, all of which are different vibes against showing your versatility. Is there a song or project that you've made uh, that gave you an aha moment that, like, this is it? Uh, this is, like, what I want to do with my sound? 2020, probably. 2020? Mm-hmm. Right. I think 2020 was, like, I just started out as, like, a Halloween. We wanted to drop it on yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Oh, really? But, like, oh, I guess it did drop on Halloween. It so did, yeah. but the amount of, um, like, movement that the song got at first, like, we released it at night school, um, like the first time it was played was oh, at yeah, night yeah, yeah. school and stuff like that. that. So like, I think at that point, that was the song that was like really established, like boom, this is kind of like the sound we're gonna go for. Not not the sound we're gonna go for, but like this is what we're doing, this is okay. who I'm working with, and this is like what to expect. Of course. It's on the path along. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, 2020 I think was kind of when that, that's when like the, turn from like SoundCloud to uh, iTunes and Spotify happened as well, yep. which is where I kind of 
really more or less considered the whole rap career doing anything. I mean, SoundCloud, uh, you have to start up, you just have to type thing, but like, kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? But once I was able to start monetizing songs, and 2020 was the first monetized song, so I think that's that was like a eye-opener. I got you. Revelation. Yeah, yeah. Now the song FIU, does that stand for Fuck It Up? Fuck It Up. Okay, okay. Yeah. I figured. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, out of all the songs that came out in 2019, you had seven with the same cover art. Uh, the songs were Dat Way, Days Gone, Ask Twice, No Mo, Peep This, uh, FIU, Kickback. Uh, are these all supposed to be uh, like a project or something? Because they all have the same cover art. That's just my, I guess that was like the original what I wanted my first album to be. Okay. Um, I made that. That is just baking soda on top of my Xbox. Sure, baking soda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll say that for yeah. now. Um, and then so when I released uh, Breath of Air and then Pablo Story, I kind of, I needed I just needed a, a stock image, I guess. Okay. So that kind of is what, anytime I don't have um, album art, that's just the stock image I go to. Yeah. That's just kind of, kinda, that's just the default. So it was never actually supposed to be, I mean, originally it was supposed to be album art, but then it just kind of turned itself into just a stock default image, just something familiar, something there. Okay. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, definitely. You know it's not Pablo. So right, right. It makes more sense. Um, well, I mean, it says Don Pablo right on the yeah. cover. As long as I can read. And baking, baking soda. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you suggest any of your other older songs for listeners to stream right after this interview? Yeah. Um, so, dude, some of the song I go back to my song called sometimes, um, Fuck It Up. That one does really well live, especially. It's one of my favorite ones to do live. Um, Ask Twice is another one. If you're bumping in the car, that's a good one. Um, honestly, all the ones you talk about, if you want to hear some more of the lyrical stuff, like, Days Gone, all the ones that like I wasn't able to monetize, the, the YouTube free beat stuff, yeah. definitely all worth checking out just because it's like stuff I wasn't able to put out, stuff you might not have heard if you checked out Spotify before. So the thing that is only 20 songs, it'll take you two hours. I'd appreciate it, you know, <laughs> and they're all worth checking out. And you can, it's cool to be able to hear progression and like, you know, yeah. style change and confidence boosts and things like that. So worth checking out if you're interested. Yeah, it's nice seeing that uh, Crumb Trail. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, of course. Yeah. So going back to 2020, uh, like the song, yep. 2020, you also, you talk about like running from the cops and Gucci flip-flops. Mm -hmm. Is that inspired by a true story? And do you actually have Gucci flip-flops? Nah, bro, it's oh, just future. Okay. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> okay, just, okay. Just, just another one of those clickbaity, uh, try to be familiar, something that's going to get stuck in your head type and it does hook, mm -hmm. you know it what I does. mean? So yeah, no, I never have, probably won't ever own a pair of Gucci flip flops. It's kind of pointless. <laughs> have ran from the cops, but was not wearing flip flops. So Damn. No, okay. half of the story is true. Half the story. <laughs> the rest of it's just catchy. Gotcha, gotcha. So what does your current studio setup look like? <laughs> it's it's like, like yeah, right, uh, right, more right, or less. Right. I mean, I've got my mic still with like just a normal pop filter and stand, where if I need to, I can send him stems. But for the most part, I mean. I just use a USB mic, but he's got like, what the is nice it? The nice mic? The Shore. What is Ooh. it? Yeah. Oh my god, I want that so, microphone so bad. That's what most yeah. of my stuff's recorded on. So anytime I have the option, I just go to his house. So what uh, what program are you using? Are you using uh, GarageBand still, or is they, it take it away? Well, there's no way you're using GarageBand. No, no. not. Oh, okay. Ableton. Thank you. Okay. He uses Thank Ableton. Thank you. And he's a fucking <laughs> god with this I'm shit. I'm sure he is. It sounds like it. Especially lately. Like, I'll try to talk him up a little bit. He's definitely coming to his groove. Um, it's fun Funny to that. see. Just just to like sit back and watch it happen because like I don't understand how he can just especially like percussion Couple section. Clicks. Just click and next thing I know I've got a whole like drum section. I'm like, what the yes. fuck did you just like how did you know <laughs> that was gonna favorite. work? How did you know that that was gonna work out the way it did? And then like being able to like being being comfortable around somebody so like I can like if I hear something I can like, you know, try to make the noise with my mouth and not feel weird about it and he'll be able to be like Oh yeah, I know what you're trying to do. You know what I mean. So like, it's really, really nice to be able to work with him and then have access to Ableton and everything that he has with it. All the plugins and stuff is just it makes things very smooth, very smooth. Oh, I'm sure it does. Now, is uh, Rouse your first producer you've worked with? Because you said the other beats were more YouTube for YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All the other ones were just like <laughs> copy YouTube MP3 download, put it in <laughs> GarageBand, put some vocals over it, um, which gets you going. But yeah, like. Yeah. There's always something Get missing some with that, um, like because you know you're putting vocals over an MP3 instead of putting your vocals inside. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you can tell. Um, so I haven't 
anything that I've released has either been recorded at my house or at at his house, nowhere else. So uh, Michaela Anderson in the chat is asking if you're gonna ever release any of your SoundCloud ones to Spotify. If I can ever get the legal rights to it, but <laughs> that's fair too. I mean, I chances guess. are probably not. Most I of guess. those have probably been claimed by now or okay. monetized by somebody else. Understand? Yeah. Honestly, I've heard some of them in like YouTube ads, like the instrumentals going oh. in the background. It's like, so, yeah, it's like, I'll never use that one. So damn. Yeah, probably not. Unfortunately, so it's kind of like that cool little archaic part about SoundCloud is there's some things that you know you can't find anywhere else so true 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 so what does uh what does a day in the life of Don Pablo look like mm, sleep till noon um, my man <laughs> uh, well wake up prisms like felt yeah <laughs> yeah right immediately ruin the day by smoking and losing all energy <laughs> dude you are the same person as him what the hell um grab an energy drink because I just lost all energy Go to or get in the shower 30 minutes before I have to clock into work. Get to work a minute before I have to clock in. Uh, work and go home, play some games, smoke, repeat the cycle. Days and then days off is you know working on cars, music, whatever. He's able to convince me that I need to come over. Um, pretty boring, dude. I guess talking about the cars a little bit, you decal them or do you um, well yeah dur dur outside. during the, yeah during the summer me and my friend we run a business decal. doing <laughs> car detailing um which is like a whole different type of like car passion i guess yeah. um that's a different type of thing and i get paid for that so it's like is it uh, satisfying it very the dirtier yeah. the car the more fun it Ooh, is honestly yeah. oh um, they can probably get pretty disgusting though right yeah, you know, what's your worst car you've had oh um, what you find in there do we found um used applicators for tampons just the applicator just the applicator but still but still <laughs> but still um like bell peppers that have definitely been under the seat for like Ooh. more than they should Ooh. Ooh. Dude, Moldy, Moldy just peppers. yeah that's really it probably like things you like that was probably puke you know what i mean but okay. like, we gotta get this clean there's like blood yeah. stains <laughs> well most of that stuff we try like if we if it's obviously blood we're like hey no just because you don't want to fuck with it? Yeah, I don't want Hep C, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't need no bio problems. I mean, so. not only that, you don't want to, you don't want to like wash away a crime scene if it's possibly. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a now, little it's, sus over it's here. Fact, is that a business you got going? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a full like LLC insured. Shout it out. What is it? Uh, Ultimate Auto Works LLC. You can check us on a Facebook. Um, Shout out. Oh, that, that is that, that. That's it. Ultimate yeah. Auto Works oh, LLC. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can if you need your car detailed. Car, trucks, boats, planes, buses. If it's planes. got wheels or if it's got a motor. If it's got paints, we can clean it. Um, so get at us. It's pretty, really pretty intuitive uh, to use our Facebook page and get a thing scheduled. I always see your so. videos after you're done of like you're Dude. really close to the paint and it's like, oh, you're like looking at something just in the, the sky or something. Pull yeah, back and it's like the car shine. Hell is satisfying, satisfying to watch. Super fun. Hell yeah. Uh, so your first song of 2020, posted January 17th, it's called Achievement. Which is a G Easy remix. Is G Easy another inspiration for you? No. Oh. Not that I. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> now we're not, yeah, yeah, Never I'm mind. Sorry. Not that I dislike him. Do we have to beat his ass again? No. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, no. Not that I dislike him, <laughs> um, but I haven't pulled any any inspiration from him. Okay. I mainly like the. Uh, it's tried by twelve. The uh, the instrumental. The beat, with, yeah. It's a really old school, okay. you know, sample. Um, but the original sample is just a little bit lacking, like the 808 ends and whatnot, um, and it didn't line up with how I arranged my vocals, like verse-wise, you know what I mean? Or like if I would have drop out at this part, the song didn't drop out with it type thing. Um, so then I ended up finding that g Easy did a, he sampled Tried by 12 as well, so then I just used his um, instrumental. Okay. So then I just credited him, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. yeah. no actual, Inspiration, not that okay. I just like. Okay, understandable. Do you enjoy making it's the remixes? Like, uh, like, is it something you're like, okay, I hear myself on that kind of type beat, and I'm gonna try it, or? Kind of, sort of. Um, the remix is kind of. I just. I don't know. Again, it goes with the clickbaity thing. If okay. you click something that people are gonna be familiar with, it's more likely for them to click on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. If somebody's gonna see G Easy, they'll be like, "Oh, let's see how bad he butchered this song." Even if they don't like <laughs> yeah. it, I at least got you there. That play counts, so thank you very much. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, that's more or less what like the whole doing remixes thing is. A bit sad the Mac one because I was I really just did that one for me. Of yeah, course, um, yeah. But like I did a Drake remix. Um, that's another one, just like really 
popular beat, somebody that everyone's going to recognize it type thing. Um, that's really where I'm going okay. with remixes. Not that I enjoy them more or less than original music. Yeah, I okay. see it. I see it. You followed that up with another club banger, uh, February 4th, 2020, called 1101. Hey. Mm. And uh, the cover art for the track is a house number 1101. Does that like tie into the song? Does that have any significance? Yeah, so that that's my house. Um, the reason we called it 1101 was because at that point in time, I was driving over to his house to do all our recordings and stuff. Um, for some reason, he just brought his whole setup over to my house, and that song was recorded in mm. my house. So okay. that's it. 1101 is Perfect. where okay. that came from. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, well, it, it, yeah like, gives it another layer of meaning. Almost, yes. You know what I mean? So what are, uh, what are some things you've had to overcome to get where you're at today? Anything specific? Just worrying about what other people think, which is, I think, obviously just human nature. Um, but, yeah, just not that it happens often, but, like, the laugh reacts if you ever, like, share some of your music, things like that. It's like, man... Why? Um, so just like, just, yeah. Just like, I made him smile. Yeah, keeping yourself, true, keeping yourself in just the mentality to stay motivated, I think has probably been my biggest thing I need to overcome. It's just, it really, it's really hard for me to, like, once I'm in the pocket, I'm in it, and we'll get the song done, we'll get going, but like, for me to find that drive, like, is, that's been my problem, honestly, which I think is just, probably busy life, stressful life, makes your hobbies less enjoyable. That's not even just with music, it's cars and video games. It's just the busier you get, the less time you have to enjoy shit. Um, and just, yeah, probably prioritizing my time and actually just motivating myself has been the biggest okay. struggle. So is there a daily positive habit that you do that makes sure you have a good day? Is there something you wake up and you're like, I gotta have breakfast? Smoke. Or smoke, <laughs> or? smoke, really, yeah. If I don't, as, I mean, obviously I suddenly have a problem. If I don't have weed, it's, <laughs> I know it's gonna be a bad day right off the bat. Oh, jeez. Um, but no, I really, I mean, every morning starts with music. Like, one well, of the first fun. things I do is I, I open up Spotify and I'll get like, that kind of chooses my vibe for the day, whatever style of music I'm going with that day. I can kind of tell, like, I'll just hit shuffle on the playlist and. Till I hit a song where the vibes are like, all right, that's what I'm feeling. So I guess that's really like, that's it. I don't do anything special to make sure I have a good day. Just like I said earlier, just kind of go with the flow, take the punches as they come, and just course, yeah. not try to be so pissed off about everything because that's so much easier than, like, yeah. It's just a lot easier to fall behind and get worried about shit than to just wake up and just do shit. So I don't try to set goals or things like that. Okay, yeah, okay. You also dropped Fink Ployed, February 28th, 2020, which is a really slow, uh, oldish sounding, spacey kind of beat, mm -hmm. uh, with some slow, thought provoking lyrics over it. Are you a big fan of Pink Floyd? Um, Considering the name is Pink Floyd, just with the well, it's a, it's a switch. It's a Pink Floyd beat. Um, okay, it's okay. actually like the guitar part off the song Breath or Breathe by Pink Floyd. Oh, okay. Um, so then I just Fink Floyd, another clickbait. No, I, I liked it to be honest. I was like, yeah, oh, interesting. Um, there. Uh, I mean, they're not, like, a huge inspirational band, but they go back to that era of, like, that's kind of, like, what my grandparents listened to at the time, so they give me that nostalgic thing. But also, like, from a musician standpoint, like, I just have mad respect for Pink Floyd. Um, and, like, I've listened to all their albums straight through, soberly, under the influence, and everything like that. So, like, and, like, just being, like, just as, like, a pure musician standpoint, like, I really just appreciate everything they do and that whole atmospheric spacey, just improvisey again, going with the flow is just why I kind of found myself going or wanting to do a song like that. Okay, okay. That makes sense. I like the whole going with the flow aspect. Uh, and then coming in hot after that with another club banger, April 3rd, 2020. So you're all over the place. You're going from slow, spacey to club banger to, to, to heartbreak yes. to club banger <laughs> called Splash, which bangs, yeah. by the way. Uh, how long did it take for you guys to put that together? That was like a two week thing. Yeah, two weeks. I'll just say once we get in the like, once we kind of get moving, it, things get moving, and now that, that's after like the uh, 2020 release. Like like I said, that's kind of where that whole turning point was. So like 2020 came, and then 1101, and then yeah, like splash. So it was just we had momentum going at that time. Um, so that was just 
me. He was just cranking beats out, and he'd send them to me. I'd be like, that's what I want. And, like, when I heard that song, for some, like, my initial goal was to try to make a song to be used on, like, TikTok as dumb as that sounds. It doesn't sound dumb. But I wanted, I, I wanted to be something super catchy, something that somebody could dance to, so I didn't want it to be, like, really, like, in-depth. Structurally wise, I wanted it to be kind of short, staccato, simple, just repetitive, more or mm -hmm. less. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, that's why. Like somebody's yeah. Head. So that one, yeah, came out quicker than most other ones would. Okay. Do you feel like when you start making a song, you have to get it done because you're like excited just to hear it start to finish? Um, verse. 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 Like I'll get a verse done, and then I'll get like this huge wave of just like. Good job, dude. Hell yeah, you earned Woo! a break. And the yeah. next thing I know, it's like two weeks before I'm back in the other verse. Yikes. So it's like once I get in the middle of a verse, we're locked in. But it's like, you once I stop that verse, you better make sure I'm doing the next one. Hey, what are we doing tomorrow? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for, right. for, real, for real, for real. Take the night off. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, once once I'm in a verse, it, I don't. Yeah, I don't like leaving it because then like. I've, I've done it before where like you'll be like oh, I'm not gonna forget that that line like I'll remember that line that's too that that's good and then you'll be like I don't remember where I wanted to go from here yeah. you know and then you end up deleting two lines that you already wrote to try to restructure you know the next verse so mm -hmm. yeah I try to just get everything done at least verse wise okay. in one spot I think it's a good way if you can't just Definitely completely finish the song yeah. at least get that verse so you don't lose right stuff. yep yep so do you have a process when it comes to making your music he sends me a 30 second to a minute long sample probably. Um, I'll immediately like know right away if I like like the vibe or not. Um, and then I kind of just melodically try to pick out a rhythm in my head, not with words or anything, but let just noises try to find like a flow. And if I feel like I found something that's good um, and is working, then I'll start to put actual lyrics behind it. And as far as like lyrics go, there's not unless it's like one of my actual like topic wise songs there's really no process behind it it's kind of just find a line to start the song with and then more or less just keep shaping it out after that and riding along with it so when you get the beats do you like sit with it for a little bit and you're like all right i'm gonna absorb this oh yeah the idea do you find it's easier to write like when you're alone in your, in your house by yourself or like in the car or kind of like where's your best writing time i guess alone in the dark high shit okay yeah <laughs> okay um that's usually it. Usually I find my most motivation will be like after work, honestly, and I'll, I'll just get done smoking. I'll have music playing in the background. I'll be vibing with the music playing, and that gives me motivation to be like, I want to make some music that I can vibe to myself. Mm. So then I'll lock it down, turn everything else off, and just really focus on that. And I'll just sit with my phone, song looping, and we'll just keep going until the lines are done. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. I'm trying um, to find a fellow artist that writes in the car as a driver, like trying to get like that. I, I find that's my like most isolating and like I'm I'm driving same stretch of whatever freeway and I'm like oh, I'm so bored. But then you get writing, you're like I'm there already. Whatever works for you works. I mean, there's definitely like if I have like one liners, I'll put them in my phone real quick so I don't mm -hmm. forget them. You right, know yeah. what I mean? Don't text and drive. Right. <laughs> but um, but as far Pull as like over. actually like yeah, sitting down <laughs> with motivation to write, it would yeah, at home by myself. Close doors, lock, lock the doors. I don't even like recording in front of him, honestly. It's just, you know. Yeah, so. used to it though at some point. I mean, I, I've gotten used to it okay. or with him now, but like, it's just one of those things I would, as, especially like, depends on the song. If it's a more personal song, you want to be alone, to be able, you want to be more vulnerable and mm -hmm. like be able to like actually allow yourself into that mindset of the song. Whereas I think when you're around people, if you're writing things, maybe you're writing to like, are they gonna think this is impressive? Are they gonna think this is cool? Yeah. Type thing. You're not out. You're not writing for yourself anymore, and your vulnerability kind of goes back down because you don't want somebody to be like, "That was a weird thing that he just said." You know what I mean? So you don't fuck them. Well, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but no, definitely that that thought I, I gets into that your that head. Yeah. Them. So I just by myself is always yeah. the best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what is your favorite part about working with Ralphs? There's too many to choose from, right? There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, honestly, probably just being able to say, like, to have a thought in my head, which, like, if I were to say it to a normal human being, they look at me like I'm having a stroke. <laughs> and they're like, what are you trying to sell me? Um, but to be able to, like, 
say that to him, you know, and like yeah, yeah. have him be like, oh, 100 percent know what you're trying to do right now. Yeah, yeah. That is so relieving, and that's probably <laughs> one of my favorite. Is to actually be working with somebody that like you can click with and yep. understands your terminology and what you're trying Speaking to portray. Right, 100 percent. And instead, of, yeah, and then you're not frustrated trying to like get a specific sound out. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's already there. So yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Okay. Well, that's that was a good answer. Um, then we come into what I think is the favorite, my favorite song of yours, uh, Who Touched Me Thermostat, which you posted April 18th, 2020. The reason it's my favorite song is because you switch it up at the end where you start to get in your zone of like screamo, mm -hmm. uh, and you're very talented when you're screaming. Yes. And when I first heard it, I was like, damn, this should have just been the whole song. Why did, why did he even have <laughs> anything in the, in the beginning that wasn't right. screamo? Um, what can you say about what can you say about yeah, touch about this track? I'm curious. Because like, you did say a couple things when we, when we weren't uh, on air. So... That, I mean, well, first off, just metal is like my uh, birthing grounds we'll go with, you know what I mean? That's, I'm most comfortable screaming, uh, most comfortable writing metal music, everything like that. So like that came very naturally. I don't think we ever started that song with the intent for it to go the direction it did. Um, I think that's the first song we ever used a loop for. Um, we started messing around with like loop packs and sample packs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I heard that one and it caught my eye right away and it kind of gave me like Kendrick Lamar Travis Scott vibes So I was like, I really like that um, and we went with it And then I think we were just trying to add things to make it more ours So it wasn't just a straight sample mm -hmm. Which is where the guitar came in because we were at my house and I had the guitar So just plugged it in figured out where we were Played the chords that were already being played just add a little bit more oomph behind it yeah. Um, and that's, I think, I, that's where I left it. And I had no plan of ever doing anything like that. And I'm pretty sure he sent me the breakdown at the end. He's like, what do you think of that? And I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, do you think we could actually, like, get away with that? Like, yeah, can we, yeah. like, can we actually it do that? It was clean as butter, dude. So, it, so, so, so we did it. We did it. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that... <laughs> Didn't make any sense. No, it didn't. Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. <laughs> but, you know, maybe butter's It went over my head until I said something. <laughs> hey, you gotta say, if you say it confidently enough, you right. can make anything go over anybody. That's right. Anyway, so. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, there was no... Just like all these bullshit questions. I have no idea what date any of your music came out. No, I'm totally joking. <laughs> you could have fooled me, dude. <laughs> I have no idea. Totally guessing. No, I'm joking. Uh, no, I kind of want to talk yeah. about that. What was the inspiration? Um, I guess you put that on the end there, but like, what was like, all right, I want to scream over this versus like, I want to rap really hard. Like, what, what made it go that direction? Um, I think we tried... I think we tried putting the normal hook at the end, and it just, it just wasn't it. Um, and then I think he just made the comment to uh, the scream um, and then I think I sent him a snapshot of me trying it and I was like is this what you mean and he's like yeah that's that's exactly that's what I did so meant. then I went upstairs and I recorded I think like three separate ranges sent him the stems and I mean that was it but yeah there was there was no decision ever really to be like we're gonna you know put a breakdown and some screamo at the end of this song it was just Literally, like, like I keep saying, going with the flow. Like, that's just how the song started to structure itself mm -hmm. after adding the guitar and hearing that little bit of, like, chug happen and a little bit of, like, oomph behind the song. It just, it just made itself. Um, and then, yeah, after hearing the guitar, it's like, obviously, you can't put clean vocals over that. It needs to be something different to add to the change in depth of the song. Yeah, so of course. Just, that was my first, like, introduction to, like, Screamo in rap. Yeah. Um, so I think it was nice that like you were going out of your initial mold of like I have to do the music this way, mm -hmm. uh, kind of playing with it, putting your own twi twist on it. How's the reception been after that song? Was it received really well? Way better than I thought, especially like live performance wise. I was so nervous to play that song live for the first. I, I did it last just mm -hmm. because like it just made sense. There's no other time for that song to go. Um, so like. That was all I could think about. Like the whole show was like, man, what are people? Like? <laughs> I so like I even warned people before the song. I was like, there's gonna be a part here at the end. Some of y'all might not like. So like it really is that. like, it's nervous to like show that song to people because like they're expecting a rap song and then they get hit with that. But I think like it was just the right amount of length. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It wasn't too in your face and unexpected. And that it was it, already lyrics that you already right. said. So, so it it's still familiar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think that was just just the right amount 
to like get the feedback that I actually got. I don't think I've gotten anybody that's been like, that was like fucking, why'd you do that? That was weird. It's really been super positive. Like, what he's like, do more of that. The whole song should have been that. Like, yeah. It, it's, it's really been good. And then, yeah, after the show, people were like, oh. like dude, <laughs> that was fucking yeah. sick. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank God. But, oh, gosh. It, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I got. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you have any plans on making more screamo music or merging it into the genre of, of rap? Yeah, the song I'm currently working on, which will be the next and only single I release until an album gets released, is going to be another one of these um, merger songs. This one will have more of it, um, too. It's always going to have it in the middle. There'll be a verse, then there'll be like your little screamo part, another verse, and then we'll break it down again. Um, so I'd like to definitely, if that single gets good like feedback, um, I mean, I think it'd be cool to have a thing. If that were to be my thing, to kind of you know, that'd be badass. Just, not not yeah, not not every sick. song, but to be every yeah, fucking yeah, song. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> but to be the guy that kind of does some shit like that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. There's gonna be more of that good, stuff. Good, absolutely, good, good. awesome. Uh, and your last song of 2020 is titled "40s and Shorties," which we got that on the on the station. Uh, what Played can you tell us DJ. about this song? And you want to say about "40s and Shorties"? They're just that club. For some shit. reason, "40s and Shorties" was like a big. Um, hashtag going around when that song came out oh, oh um, okay so like that's kind of where the the chorus gotcha. came from um and then outside of that um the guy who sent it to me that's like the only song that he hasn't produced for me um it was actually b plus's producers the one who gave it to me okay um i think i kind of asked him what vibes he was looking for and he had said like kind of some like dark not demonic but like just rude like ignorant shit yeah. okay um so like after I got the hook or the chorus out of the way, that's where, like, the first verse opens up, like, pissing on your sidewalk, dick swanging, like, as ignorant as I could possibly fucking be. And that was, and then I just try to carry that vibe throughout the whole song. It was like, yeah. basically, this is my song. Like, you're listening. You know what I mean? Like, I'm running the show was kind of the vibe I went for for that song. So, yeah. And it came, oh, yeah. it came easy. I think you hit that pretty, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, god damn. He's getting there. The fucking energy drink did nothing for me. Uh, your most recent song, you posted December 15th, 2021, called Hoko, which I assume stands for Homecoming, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what, what can you say about that? It had been like a year since we did anything. He had sent me that song, Rouse did probably a year, honestly, before it even got released. I wrote a verse for it. And then, I don't know, it was probably like November time, like I realized that hadn't put anything out in 2021 at all and I was like that's kind of bogus that's an issue you know what I mean <laughs> um so we're starving we, out here yeah, yeah and then just I he still had the beat so we just kind of picked up where we left off and we're like yeah we should get something back out let's get some motivation going um and I said I already had the first verse so like it was fairly easy to just pick back up after the hook or whatever you want to say and yeah. just continued the song I mean it was half finished so like it was extra motivating to be like it's that close to being mm, done yeah let's just get it done you know what I mean so yeah and then like I sent out a couple samples like on Snapchat of it and people were like dude that's the song that's <laughs> like that's the fucking song and I was like okay yeah we'll, we'll get it done so we'll get it done <laughs> yeah so we kind of went over your past music uh what do you want the listener to take away from your music mm -hmm. No, um, I want them to know that like I'm just trying to have fun. Like that's the vibe is more fun. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm not serious because like music is my life. Um, like keeps me alive. Um, but that's not to say like I put all my seriousness. Like I don't want people to think that like I'm doing this to make money or I'm doing this to be taken seriously. Like I want people to listen to it with the same mindset I have when I'm writing it. It's just, we're doing this for fun, we're here for a good time, and if anything happens, it, it happens, you know what I mean? So just don't, I, I don't know if I'm using the term right, I mean, take it with a grain of salt, I guess, because like everything is, more or less, it's gonna be cap, we'll say. Um, obviously, I don't have a yacht, and I'm not, you know, I don't have 40s and shorties and shit like that. Like, I have a shorty and a 40 at home. But, like, that's, you know what I like? <laughs> that's a guess. Um, so, just 
just have fun with it. Enjoy don't, life. Yeah, listen. don't don't I got a shorty and a forty. Yeah, don't, it doesn't flow as well. One of one of each. <laughs> don't don't take me super seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't like I don't even like saying I'm a rapper because like I just I just like having fun. Embrace and it. Rap. Well, that's yeah. what I am. <laughs> that rap music shit. is what I've been putting out the most. So like it's just yeah, just just have fun with my music. Don't. I'll scrutinize it, but like don't take it literally because okay. most of it is not literal most of it is just me having fun and just experimenting with what i can do of course right. okay so uh we're gonna get into the social media deep dive but on this uh, deep yeah. dive we are actually in the shallow and there wasn't a whole lot for me to go off of on your social medias unfortunately so it's just like a is that unfortunate well yeah i wanted a lot i want to i guess not for you Keep it low key. <laughs> for me it's unfortunate <laughs> um because i like this part of the show <laughs> this is your segment yeah you start uh with this. But you have a very old Instagram account because your first post is being from 2013, which is just a picture like most others did at the time, uh, just a selfie. Yeah. This is just just a plain old selfie, and you always had the same aesthetic. You're always that rocker kid or, or emo, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean, like emo looking. <laughs> um, and you also post a shit ton about cars. So what is I guess what's the significance cars has to you? Is there anything other than just like liking cars? Is there anything um, weird to that? Well, again, I'll go back to uh, my stepdad quick, who was like the one who motivated me. Like seeing guitar, he played it. Um, my music taste, he gave it to me. And then working on cars, um, he always did that as like a side hustle. Okay. Um, I don't want to like say a, like hustle, a mechanic. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So our garage when I was a kid was always filled with people. Like not our cars. Never were our cars in the garage ever. Um, it was always somebody else's being worked on. And then like I kind of reached an age where. It was go out and help your dad in the garage. You know what I mean. And at the time, Are you holding the flashlight or well, every you gotta start somewhere. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. And at the time, it was like probably like Ugh, I don't want to, but now like having that skill set is very rewarding, and to be able to like, especially since you enjoy cars. Well, right, and like yeah, so to be able to like do things you want with cars and not get, I mean, they're always gonna be stressful, but like just to have the knowledge and stuff is very slick. Um, so I credit I credit him for like why I like cars. It's just nature versus nurture. I was just around it, so just naturally grew towards it. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. I understand that. I understand that. It's a good you know. Like he he must he's inspired you for a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. So that's good. Sorry, real quick uh, on the Instagram here, Kim said that she found you actually through your clickbait songs, um, and she said she found uh, Gucci flip pops. And she really digs it, so she, she, I want to make sure I told you that. Hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying. Click Hell bait. yeah. Get the people in. there. Get, Get them in. in. Get they the can leave when they going. want. Uh, so where can we expect Don Pablo in the future? Probably at home smoking, dude. Just chilling. <laughs> Honestly, like I said. Don't. With the ass at $5, I don't. Yeah, I ain't, yeah, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I don't like it. Like I said, not that it's a bad thing to set goals, but I don't want to, like, put words like speak words and then like feel obligated to make them come into fruition like i would like to just you can find me just going with the flow like i've told okay. you guys there'll be a single coming out there'll mm -hmm. be an album before the year and that's that's going to be my motivation so i guess just okay i'm gonna trust the process um so i'm not going to ask you about your short-term long-term goals then <laughs> yeah no, there, that there's he's having no, fun with it yeah, yeah that's exactly. really what it is it's well, just it makes sense being in the moment i mean obviously it'd be crazy for there to be um like the feedback you want to like wake up to that phone call or that email you know what i mean that's everybody's dream but that's not practical and i've that's just what i've always told myself so it doesn't matter how talented you are like you just if you don't have resources you can't do certain things unfortunately so it's like i just i'll let my talent speak for itself i'll have fun and whatever happens happens so like it would be sweet to blow up it'd be sweet to open for people or close for people but it's like just to stay practical. And when I do get that opportunity, it's going to make it that much more special instead of being like, I knew this time would come. Be like, hell yeah, the time has come. You know what I mean? Finally. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I totally get that. Um, if you could choose any artist to get a feature from for free, who would it be? Well, I mean, Mac, if I could. Living artist. What one could you do going forward? Probably Cole. Oh, okay. Probably okay. Cole. Just because outside of Mac, he's my second biggest inspiration. So, like, to be able to get him on a song would be... And he's one, of, wild. he's one of those artists you can give him any beat. Like, he just did a song with YG, and it's mm. like, what? Yeah. Like, that's not you, but he fucking murders it. So it's Every like, time. That's what I'm saying. He's so, kind of goes with, like, he's where I get that, like, whole, like, don't lock your sound down vibe. Kind of, like, experiment with everything. Because, yeah. like, his albums go everywhere, you know what I mean? So, 
It'd be cool. I think that's a good cool. Put an M on his head, head like Luigi's brother. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could have a dream venue to perform at, where would you want to go and perform? For some reason, I always thought Times Square was like... I mean, that would be kind of Or crazy. like, not Times Square, like Central Park. Okay. Like that also would be was crazy. always for some reason in my head was like that is you've made it if you can convince the entire town of New York just rent out the park right if you <laughs> right well that's what I'm saying if you can, <laughs> if you can convince New York to rent out Central Park so you can curse them out for two hours straight exactly. you fucking made it you know what that'd I mean that'd be crazy that'd be crazy um, practical goals though I think it'd be dope to play for a hundred block oh I think but, but again that's another where you can't cuss though you got you'd have to rent it you can't cuss fuck them. <laughs> no, you can. Are they gonna do a cup powered all downtown? Oh, they probably. I mean, they, they run so fast. Could, that yeah. park. <laughs> they probably would like shut it down. Freedom of speech, bitch. Yeah. Shut me down. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Any of those open park, yeah, vibes or like the what is it in the? Uh, I fucking forget where it is, but that like mountainside. Um, Quarry. Not not here. Oh, okay. Um, okay. but like there's an actual stage where like the bleachers are built into the side of the mountain. And That's in like, Colorado, right? Yeah. I was there, oh, bro. That, that is place. such a nice place. Oh, that man, would be a sweet so place. so fucking dope. Yeah. The Red of, Rock. Red Rock. Something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. He fucking, knows what I'm talking about. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking Any about. Any of those outdoor venues, I, did a back I think, would be <laughs> sweet. I, I, I don't personally know the one you're talking about, but I said the quarry. I still think it'd be cool to do a show out there. Just like at the been. bottom of the quarry and everybody's at the top. top. Yeah, you're, you're at the top. top. Oh, you're at the top. You're at the bottom. You got a generator. Oh, I feel like everybody should be at the yeah, top, yeah. though, because I'm at Bosch Field. I've had that same thought before, too. That's exactly why. Everybody's down on the bottom. Yeah, everybody should be at the bottom, yeah. I can stage dive on top. Oh, my God. You got to water. Yo, big, big ass map down there. Y'all, we can talk show about going out the, the year. Bag. For real. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don um, Pablo played his first and last show. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first and last show at the quarry, too. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, um, we aren't allowed back there. Yeah, exactly. headline news, though, so. Hey, all publicity. All publicity is good publicity. Here, so my man, he's getting with it. Let's go. Household name. I hope you know I'm kind of making fun of it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, as we approach the end of the show, I have one more important question to ask, and that is why should people care about Don Pablo? Because Don Pablo cares about them. Ooh! Okay. All right, that was smooth. Um, that was smooth. Honestly, though, just because I'm really not trying to be, like, a fake dude. Like, I'm not... I, I rap about fake shit, but, like, what rapper doesn't rap about fake shit? You know what Sometimes. I mean? Um, yeah. Even J. Cole literally came out and said his song, 100 mil. All cap. He's like, I ain't got no fucking 100 mil. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so just, like, why should you care about Don Pablo? Because... He's just real, I guess. He's not trying to be somebody he's not. He actually enjoys music. He's a musician himself who, like, cares about the craft and everything that goes behind it, not just the lyricists or, like, he appreciates every aspect of the craft. So he's a cool dude. You should check him out. Oh, yeah. Come for the clickbait titles and stay for the good vibes. Absolutely. Facts. Absolutely. So here we're coming to the end of the show. It's been fucking awesome having you here. Appreciate we've, it. You know, we've known about you for a while. You were, you were also a pioneer on the CW Hip Hop uh, when we first start first yes. started it. Um, One of the first 15. Exactly. That's That's, that's, that's kind of crazy. That's sweet. Uh, just to look back on that. Dude, that's um, crazy. To rate this interview, or what would you rate this interview, I should say, 1 out of 10? Uh, why do you have to put us on the spot like that? <laughs> You're the first person to put that's, that's, that's that. That's not. Everybody, everything you've ever asked that to never had a problem answering it. I don't know why. That's because they no, all lie. real. Don's that's real. what I'm saying. What did they all say? 10 out of 10? It's no. Some of them, no. but not all of them. No, definitely not all of them. Um, we definitely have Give us a few yeah, seconds. I've groups. never been in this, so I don't have anything okay. to judge it off of. Um, based off other podcast vibes I've found and like listened to, Seven and a half, eight out of ten. Like it, the cool. vibe, the vibes oh, are there. Cool. Everything's there. I didn't feel like the interview process was very fluent. There was no like weird pauses, things like that. So, absolutely, I don't necessarily. Anything I guess I can ask that you think we can improve on? Let's give Mason a mic. We're working. He doesn't on talk. Yeah, he doesn't even talk when about. he has a microphone in front of him, he barely talks. <laughs> We've it. tried. Um, <laughs> no, but honestly, the research he did was hell impressive. I. Some Nardwar shit wasn't expecting that. <laughs> ah, that's, that's what I'm going for. That was really cool. Um, so props to that. I wasn't expecting any of that. But just, I mean, no, y'all doing it. You're hanging out, which is just make sure you're making people comfortable because that's it. Give them the time to talk and then return. It's definitely what we try to do. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So is there a? Oh no, don't go to the loop. 
Uh, this is where you can go ahead and promote anything you want. You can talk about anything you want. Uh, give shout outs. You can even ask us questions. Take as much time as you want. It's your, your show right now. Um, the Don Pablo Show. Yeah. It's got a ring to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That should be your um, nice album. The Don Pablo Don Show. The Don Pablo Show. Stay tuned. Ooh. So, yeah, I, guess, I mean, there is an album coming. That's I don't have a date. I don't have a name. Uh, I don't have. I like names. I don't. There, we've got like three songs, but they're already single, so you already heard them. There'll be one song. That I'll release as a single before it gets put out, which will be titled uh, "Identity Theft Is Not a Joke, Jim." So you'll see that I'm one, and you that. will probably click on that one because why wouldn't you? But that's everybody's um, seen The Office. Exactly, exactly. So just once you see that, like once that song is out, just know there's not going to be anything else coming until a record or until I decide there's just nothing coming. But I don't want to. No, I, I won't do that. I won't do that. Hold your feet. Come on, man. No, no, we really. I want to. Hey, bro, so you got to be on his ass, okay, bro? You're he not that long. Don't let him see. He has been. Um, honestly, I probably would have retired already if it weren't for him. Good. Um, so, yeah, just that single coming out, and then just, I mean, talk to me. Let me know if you guys have any oh. sorts of things, things like that. I love hearing from people. Um, not even to be like all like selfish or selfless or anything, but like just it feels good to hear what you guys have to say, and it's really really motivating. Um, so if anybody wants to reach out ever or anything, like I appreciate everybody, every single click that I get, every play, I look at that stuff. Like I check my insights daily, so I see who's listening from where. Like I notice you guys, so appreciate that. Just stay tuned for the single coming out, record to follow whenever. Um, I don't know. Anything? Anyone you want to shout out? Anybody help you keep going? Rouse over here on the uh, on the couch. Where can they find you, my guy? Uh, get over here. Get over here on the microphone. Come on now. Come we're here. gonna we're gonna play a little bit of your work too. I yeah. Here, so tell them where to find you, at, my guy. Uh, my social media is actually pretty scarce. Okay. Uh, since I rebranded myself. Oh, I got. Uh, I didn't know what you meant by scarce. Okay. Yeah. Got you. But um, anywhere that you find his music, basically, uh, I'm also on iTunes, Spotify, yep. every major music platform. Uh, SoundCloud's the same name. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. I just started my Instagram, so there's not much out there. But yeah, every other social media. Oh yeah. Or same name, Rouse. Rouse. R A U S. R A U S. With the brackets. Yeah. The brackets. You might have to add or delete the brackets depending on where you are, because oh. some of them didn't take it. Okay. Okay. Real, okay. real quick here, because he did send something in for us. Uh, we got a what is it? Two minutes, thirty seconds, a little. Yeah. What do you call it a mix or what's? It's just like a little collage of uh, stuff that he's gonna be on and then. Stuff that he's also featured on. Collage, so it's multiple things? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. it opens up with a song that will probably likely end up being on the album. No vocals except for, there's like one track that's got vocals on this little snippet. Um, otherwise, the rest are kind of just like instrumentals that are going to be on the record. Um, a cypher that I'm doing with U2 um, is on there as well. And then a snippet of the uh, the single that's coming out. And it kind of gives you the vibe, the whole the metal vibe, you'll get a feel of how that's going to go. So Okay. That's, I mean, I guess it ties in with what you asked me before. What is there to look forward to? Here's a little bit of, what's you know, some, to? a little, yeah, some sounds of what's okay. to come. Perfect. Okay. All, right. All done we're by gonna, him. We're going to listen to that now or what? We'll do it at the very end. Oh, so at the very end. Okay. okay. Yeah, gotcha. We'll, we'll gotcha. give the listener something to chew on on the end here. So, thank you so much for making it in here. Thank we'll you, guys. Hell yes. Appreciate oh, yeah. you making the, the drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the long, the treacherous drive. Yeah, when I'm did, sorry, you guys are going to reimburse for gas, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry we don't I got do that. Like, you got cash at that moment. I still like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's uh, live podcast. Go follow Don Pablo where? Uh, Don Pablo, Facebook, SoundCloud. Spotify, everything like that, um, just straight Don Pablo. Otherwise, if you want to find me on Instagram, keep up to date on some of like my more social life, I guess. Uh, that would be Isami Don Pablo, all like underscores in between. Perfect. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CW Hip Hop. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, BVNC95. Garky, where can the listener find you at? You guys can find me on Instagram at Garky Gaines, G A R K E G A I N Z, and pretty much any other platform at just Garky. What about you, Prism? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Prism Rap, P R I Z M R A P, and you can go and stream my music on any platform as Prism. So. All right, and then also, I apologize, I didn't have this in my notes, but we have another right. interview. Uh, do you know the next one? Oh, Conclusion to God. On uh, what date? Uh, yeah, let me look at the board. <laughs> well, okay. I'll stall a little bit. Um, yeah, so we do have uh, the show with a bunch of artists coming up in July. We haven't made too much announcement for it, but we're going to have Dom, we're going to have uh, Prism, uh, B Plus, Laron, myself, and then JD. So that's going to be kind of. And in oh, theory, he's going to be spinning. Conclusion to God on the 23rd. The 23rd. Okay, so make sure you guys are here for that. Two one weeks. As well. 
but we'll have more information on that show. I'm really excited to share the stage yeah. and see what the turnout will be. Good. Good. It's on my birthday, so I really got no Ooh. excuse, people. You, better be you got no excuse. No excuse, man. Well, unless you're under 21. I'll get you. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I'll get you. They've fenced <laughs> off the back door now, so you can't, like... Really? Yeah, it's like there's like a whole fence around that back area now. No, no, show it. Uh, Oh, I thought it was like Patriots. Oh, Patriots. Oh, Patriots. that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, what? Probably an all ages show. I thought <laughs> you were talking about night school. Either my way, oh, I got my little sisters in a night school when I played. What? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> hey. They weren't allowed to drink, but well, of yeah, course, yeah. of course not. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't think, think they were. Yeah, I got them in. Um, but all right, all right. So yeah, what was that date? It was twenty third. Twenty third. All right, Two we're going have conclusion of the God in here. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be live again next Wednesday at 7, uh, yes, 7 p.m. on our IGTV and then on CWHipHop.com as well. So Thanks. we'll see you next Wednesday. Have a great night. Peace. Peace. Bye. Peace.